beauty for ashes. I'm teaching you tonight on this subject, hoping to give an answer to the subject of hopelessness and despair. And please, I want you to lend me your attention. This message is first for your edification and then that you become an extension of comfort to many who are confused right now, asking questions that science may not be able to answer. The Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 61, we're reading from verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 61, from verse 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord, it says, is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. And then the Bible says, to give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. May the Lord bless us mightily tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let me start by reminding us that manifesting the possibilities that come with the spirit life is a product of quality training. When the believer is not trained, you will not know how to navigate yourself through the maze of experiences that are scheduled around your spiritual life, both good and bad. Unfortunately, for many believers, because they have not been mentored into making sense of any and all spiritual situation, they find themselves in offense, they find themselves confused, they find themselves discouraged, especially in the midst of unfavorable situations. I have taught you here that training exposes you to the knowledge required for victory while minimizing error and minimizing waste. The advantage of training is that it gives you an opportunity to experience victory with minimal error and minimal waste. Hallelujah. The first thing I want to establish tonight is that tragic and unpleasant situations are real. Tragic and unpleasant situations are real. In as much as we are people of faith, the Bible does not teach the believer to ignore the reality of tragedies and unfavorable situations. The Bible does not teach us to act as though they were not there. We can superimpose them with a superior belief, but that it is not unscriptural to come to terms with the fact that tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real hallelujah and the effect of tragedies and unpleasant conditions are also real when you lose a loved one the effect is real when you lose your job the effect is real when you go through some turbulent time in your health your marriage your job your church your ministry all of these things are real. The Bible does not teach us to pretend. Believing by faith is not the same as pretense. Are we together? The Bible does not teach believers to pretend. The Bible teaches us to triumph over pain, triumph over situations, but it starts with recognizing the reality of those situations. I need to say this. Crying and weeping, I wrote here, over painful and tragic situations is not unbelief. The Bible makes provision for even believers to cry. The Bible makes provision for believers to express their humanity decently in the midst and the presence of unfavorable situation. 
The Bible is full of great men, even patriarchs who had to cry, had to weep. Some of them had to ask God painful questions. You talk of Abraham and Sarai. You talk of the nation of Israel in bondage. You talk of men like Gideon. You talk of men like Ruth. Hallelujah. You even talk of Jesus himself. John eleven thirty five. 35. The Bible says Jesus wept. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about Jonah. He was frustrated and he asked the Lord to just take his life. Even Elijah himself was frustrated. And so it is not unscriptural to come to terms with the reality of tragedies and unpleasant conditions. Please look at me. If you have been alive for as little as one year upon the earth, I am sure that you may have faced a situation or two or more in your life that has called for tears, called for sober reflection. There is no man, no matter how spiritual, no matter how prosperous, no matter how educated, who is entirely immune from situations that are unpleasant. Are we together? The faith life does not promise us unpleasant situation. It only promises us victory in the midst of or victory in spite of. Are we learning now? I'm teaching on beautiful ashes. First point, that tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real and that you must come to terms with that. When someone dies, that death is real. When someone goes through pain, that pain is real. When someone loses their job and they no longer have salary, that is a real situation. Hear me again, God does not teach believers to pretend we are people of faith and the basis of faith is a superior promise that is greater than the current tragedy. He does not teach believers to pretend. Sometimes we get too hard and we get too harsh on people when their humanity finds expression, especially in the midst of painful situations. We have people who get disappointed. We have people who get pained. We have people who grieve and go through very, very unpleasant seasons. And sometimes in a bit to challenge people to still remain in faith, we swing to the other side of the pendulum and we try to strangle away the humanity of people and make them feel guilty for crying. We make them feel guilty for taking a minute to absorb whatever pain they are going through. And so in teaching this, very important sermon tonight the first thing i want you to know is that tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real as a man of god you would think that all i've seen in my life are just miracles and signs and wonders and pleasant testimonies i have cried myself i have cried for others hallelujah we have lost people within the ministry there are people who have come with testimonies that are not the best there are still people till date who are trusting god releasing their faith to be healed in several areas in spite of the many testimonies we already have it takes a lot of honesty to admit this that tragedies and unpleasant situations are real is someone learning already Perhaps someone came to church or someone is connecting from across the globe, finding meaning. Where is God in the midst of this pain? How could God be there when my child died? How could God be there when my wife died, my husband died? How could God be there when I lost my job? Did you know that if you do not understand a message like what I'm about to teach you, God will be so confusing. It will not make sense to trust him. And you know, pain has a way of re educating and reorienting your mind bringing you to a point where you no longer believe God because it doesn't seem to make sense believing him it looks like the lot of the unbeliever and the believer eventually becomes the same tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real they are real I remember as a very 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 young boy just beginning to love the things of the spirit we used to have one gentlemen we're a group of friends who love jesus with all our hearts serving him we just got filled with the holy spirit experiencing supernatural things and then at a point he the gentleman was a sickler i still remember it's many years now and one time he just fell ill the crisis just broke out and i had the honor to be the only person who went with another you know of a, a senior teachers to go and see him at the hospital smiled at him we joked you know and i told him i said don't worry you'll be fine 
and we'll be praying waiting for you to get fine not knowing that was the last time i was going to see him and a few hours later they told me he had gone i couldn't believe it until i saw the poster with his face i had to tap myself and say you mean this guy is gone let me tell you the truth when you find people crying when you find people going through pain don't be too quick to make them feel foolish if you have nothing to say let your hands do the speaking embrace them in love and allow those tears to sponsor the healing process are we together tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real but the second thing i want us to know is that for the believer in christ the bible has good news and here's the good news romans chapter 8 from verse 28 the bible says romans 8 28 for we know and we know that all things if you're a believer say all things and we know that in spite of the reality of tragedies in spite of the reality of unpleasant situations that seem to weave themselves into our lives at one point or the other my bible says and we know that all things work together all things may not come together but they work together they may not come together but they work together for the good to them that love the lord to them who are the called according to his purposes the called according to his purposes so the bible tells us the second point to note that all things can work together now that's a very expensive statement all things including tragic situations including painful situations including situations that can almost make a man curse god how do you say all things work together perhaps it would have made sense to say all good things work together all wonderful things all hopeful things but the bible authoritatively says all things can work together someone say all things shout it again say all things work together prophesy to yourself say all things are working together speak like a believer say all things are working together even if you are crying say it one more time say all things are working together now take a moment and just meditate on that statement imagine the many things that become all things for you all things mean the death of your father maybe all things mean the death of your mother unfortunately maybe all things means the job that refused to come all things means uh, the, your spouse all things means a painful divorce no matter what it is the bible never says all things come together you can't blame everything on god but the bible says provided it arrived your life it can be made a raw material all things all things do not come from god because the bible defines the character of the things that come from god it is every good and perfect gift that comes from the lord so there are things that do not come from the lord but that provided it arrived the believer's life the intelligence of god remodels the strategy to make all things all things are we learning now so do not confuse what i am saying i am not saying all evil evil does not come from god the bible tells us that that god is full of grace and truth if it is evil we know that it comes from the enemy everything that is anti-god anti-salvation anti-redemption for sure do not let your pain convince you all things do not come from god but god is able to make all things walk together hmm. all things you may have been careless with your job and you lost the job the job loss did not come from god it came as a result of your not discerning and knowing the principle that makes for increase and excellence but now that you are in the loss what then is your advantage as the believer you put your money in a wrong place and the money disappeared it, it, it may not be God it can't be God that led to that loss but now that you are in that situation will God leave you like that no someone say all things ah this is a message of hope say all things 
begin to reminisce on the many things that make up your all things because our all things differ what what is all things for me may be very different all things your carelessness of yesterday maybe you lived a wayward life as a child all things now that you are saved it looks like there is no hope i can tell you all things all things can work together they may not have come together but now that they are in your life the intelligence of god is vast enough to reinvent a strategy that incorporates that tragedy and produces victory out of it this is the difference between a believer one in christ and one who is outside christ is someone learning so i started by saying tragedies are real unpleasant situations are real pain is real losses are real defeat is real i can tell you that we're not called to pretend we're not called to act as if it's not there it's there and the effect can be very telling on a believer but the believer is one who has access to more superior information one of which is that all things may not come together all things that are in your life may not have come from God but provided it's arrived your life and your destiny space it can work together for the good to them that love the Lord and the Bible says to them who are called according to his purpose is someone learning Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 Romans 8 18 what does the Bible tell us for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time someone read that sentence after me the sufferings of this present time one more time the sufferings of this present time you would think such a statement should not come from the lips of a man who is full of faith in the body of Christ today if you mention this word suffering and you join it with time it is interpreted as unbelief and here is Paul Paul who had an encounter with Jesus he makes bold to tell you that there is such a season in a man's life he says the sufferings of this present time the inconveniences the constraints that come with this present season are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us shout amen so that every time you see sufferings know that there is a parallel to it that is waiting don't just receive the suffering and don't expect glory that the sufferings of this present time whatever name you call it death accident tragedy whatever it is he said it is nothing to be compared with the glory it's like telling a student in school that the suffering you are going through burning midnight candles putting your legs in cold water still remember and all the strategies that you invent to study and push through that the sufferings are not compared to the blessings that come by the time you become a consultant it's a word of hope the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us can i give you more scriptures second corinthians chapter 4 8 to 10 all things can work together here's what paul again says we are troubled on every side how many sides every side that it is possible for a man like job to be troubled on every side trouble you turn to your finances and it looks like it's going haywire then you turn to your marriage and it's almost upside down then you turn to your spiritual life and you find out that it looks like that candle is going down you turn to your relationships and I mean things are just going around your life. Let me tell you the truth. Not many people have experienced this statement. Troubled on every side. But I have met people who are troubled on every side. By reason of this work that God has given, I've had the honor of speaking to, praying with, counseling and comforting people who represent this scripture. To the point that when you are done praying they don't say amen and it's not unbelief they are used to pain they are used to the word not working so when you say in jesus name while you are shouting and sweating they are just listening to you and it is not unbelief sometimes pain can stop you from shouting amen 
they said it they just did not voice it out the bible says we are troubled on every side yet not distressed it says we are perplexed but not in despair the next verse please it says persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed verse 10 always bearing about in the body the dying of the lord jesus that the life also of jesus might be made manifest in our body so it's not just pain it's not just persecution it's not just to be perplexed and to be downcast it says we are bearing that reproach but we also know that the glory the life might be also made manifest in our body second corinthians 4 17 i'm giving you these scriptures to establish the fact that all things can work together let's read second corinthians 4 17 together ready read for our light affliction which is but for a moment it for us you see the word there again a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory one more time koinonia for our light affliction whatever you call it which is but for a moment work it for us now take note of that scripture the bible never said work it for all mm -mm. light afflictions do not work glory for all but for we who are in christ our light afflictions and no matter how long it looks the bible calls it a moment relative to the glory that is coming it says it worked for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory let me give you the last scripture james chapter one i love this two to four james chapter one two to four establishing the fact that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purposes let me read for you and you listen my brethren he says count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations please give me amplified you would think the word there just means temptations like being tempted is the word trials 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 what other version NIV I'm looking for the word trials it says count it all joy when you fall into beautiful it says whenever you face trials of many kinds knowing this verse 3 says that the trying go back to kjv now knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience you see that word again worketh patience verse 4 it says but let patience have its perfect work that ye may be mature and complete the word perfect there's the word mature the word entire means complete wanting nothing in as much as we have admitted that tragedies and unfavorable situations are real we must also know that in Christ this is the defining point in Christ if it is not in Christ then your lot your doom is already predicted unfortunately but in Christ the Bible says all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and to them who are the called according to his purposes now please look up back to the scripture we read the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 that among the many things that God is able to give the saints is beauty for ashes. Please look up. How many of you have seen ashes before? Ashes is defined as the residue that is left after burning happens. Am I right? Do you know the process that leads to ashes? Ashes first starts usually with a tree blossoming beautiful tree then that tree is cut down loses its life till it becomes wood then you would think that was the end of the tragedy that wood is now subjected to fire till it becomes coal 
and then from coal it finally becomes ashes and the Bible says even at that point there is still something God can do about it from a tree to wood that is bad enough because the life is gone are we together now now what is left is further bond until it becomes coal and then the coal is burnt until it becomes ashes ashes is the final state of anything when it's been burned thoroughly the form the beauty the color the glory is totally gone you call it ashes and the bible says such a reality can be a man's experience are we together pay attention now beauty for ashes now look up when we were in school we were taught something called synonyms and antonyms remember and if you recall properly just dust your english for one minute the opposite of beauty is not ashes if i'm to use an antonym for beauty it may be maybe something else i'm not sure ashes would have been the best word there but the bible says that when god comes he looks for ashes when he finds ashes he gives beauty now one of the things you are going to be learning here is that god is a miracle worker but the way he works his miracles is that sometimes he still leaves you with your water he only turns it to wine but there are times you will have to take the ashes away you will never see it again there is nothing that can come out of the ashes what happens is not is a replacement he is not turning water to wine when he turns water to wine the water is there he doesn't need to give you anything new he will still use the water as the raw material but the bible says there is a way he can look at your life and see that what is there is ashes he will collect the ashes away and give you beauty beauty for ashes <laughs> he does not give you beauty to wrap the ashes with it he collects the ashes you may never see it again when you understand this you will learn as you'll be learning right now that even in the midst of hopelessness there is something you may never see again like your loved one who is dead you may never see them in the flesh consider that as ashes but that God can bring beauty he can put something in your life it may not be equal to a mother it may not be equal to a father it may not be equal to the pain it is not all the time that water turns to wine but if it is God even ashes can be collected and beauty is given back is someone learning now this is very powerful when you learn this you will know that there is nothing called hopeless for the believer because in our world today we perceive the zenith of hope provided there is life the moment life is gone whether from a human being or from a thing we generally say it is hopeless to mean nothing can be done about it and you may be right but walk with me as i show you how believers can walk perpetually in victory lay your hands on your head in one minute and ask the lord to open your eyes for salvation for deliverance send a word of hope in jesus mighty name we pray